Big Red, I gotta ask you, you know you are, you know everything Hilltopper related. How well are the Lady Tops gonna do in the tournament? I think seven wins. That might win them a national championship. When you look back at that time of building this program and getting the name out there, did you all ever think this day was going to come? That oh, was sure, possible? sure. It was literally a perfect weekend in Bowling Green. The South Warren Spartans ended all with their first ever state championship, going 15-0 as they beat Johnson Central. 36 to 6. You talked about how Western, they, they don't change conferences as much. They've been in two conferences really for the better part of 60 years. For fans maybe not too up to date with Conference USA, what can they expect to see uh, in this new conference? You talked about what the atmosphere be, will be like and certainly to have a good atmosphere you need to have a lot of fans. What are the ticket sales looking like right now? It's looking like we're going to have a pretty good crowd for the game tonight. When Danny King speaks about his grandson, the love and pride is striking. I can't explain. I mean, he's just a big dream of my life. Like many incoming freshmen, South Warren's Bryce King will pack his bags and head off to college in a few months. But the current lane that will guide him to Campbellsville University may have been empty, if not for the man he calls P. Paul. He decided he would want to play soft baseball and he didn't like it. I said, take up bowling. It's fun. Little did Bryce know, his future had been pinned down. No, I thought it was just going to be like a like an outside thing to do, but it honestly became this. After countless hours of hard work with his grandpa by his side, bowling was no longer just a hobby. I started to get scouts looking at me, and it just got into my head, maybe if I keep grinding, I can get more offers. It didn't take Danny long to realize his grandson was turning their shared love for the sport into opportunity. When I come out here and watched him, <laughs> he showed me that he was doing good. I was proud of him. I, I'm proud of him, what he's doing, with what he's doing with his life, going to college. Like I said, he's a good boy. Even though the game will take Bryce away from home. I'm going to miss him when he's gone. I'm going to really miss him when he comes by the house on biscuit and gravy. The time, money, and love his family has spared will always be with him every time he makes his approach. In Bowling Green, Andrew Dawson, 13 Sports. Anything we can do to try to help the health of our kids obviously is a benefit. In the last few years, a big focus on all levels of football is concussions, how to prevent them, or at least how to minimize their impact. I think that all of us are far more aware of a young man's health, um, very aware of any type of concussion issue, that, there's, that, that rest is mandatory. Uh, we're going to listen to trainers. Uh, we're going to listen to doctor advices and, and, and make sure that uh, because we all know now that that second concussion is the one that really can bring permanent damage, and we certainly don't want to bring a young man back into action too quickly. And what the Purples are doing this season to improve their players' health is use new technology, like these Guardian caps. Now, they fit over the helmet like a protective bubble, and what they do is they should reduce the impact of injury collision by up to 33%. Purples trainer Andrew Bolt goes into detail about how the caps actually work. And they uh, kind of work as a, as a shock ab absorption and extra padding um, that's kind of between uh, the uh, two helmets. And in theory, the, the idea is kind of to absorb the initial impact that would you know, normally be, be absorbed by your head and the helmet. The decision to try them out, that was a no-brainer. When uh, Coach Wallace first, first contacted me uh, about doing it for our school, I, I, I mean, couldn't say yes soon enough. Um, I think it's, it's a wonderful idea. Um, you know, I think especially at this level, you know, you've got some kids that are really highly trained. You've got some kids that aren't. And I think that with something like that, it kind of it, it minimizes the the randomness of the injury. So how are the players liking them? Well, at first they were unsure, but one player says he can tell the caps work. Uh, these are going to be embarrassing, but uh, I mean they're kind of annoying at first, but then after a while you can't tell that. I mean, there's been times of practice where I've where I went head on and uh, kept. It wasn't as bad as it was. The Purples aren't the only teams using the caps. The University of South Carolina has also been using them in their spring practices. In Bowling Green, Andrew Dawson, 13 Sports. In less than 72 hours, the Hilltoppers will be on the field in Nashville against Vanderbilt, starting their season against an SEC opponent. Now the Hilltoppers are just 2-15 and 15 all time against the SEC with the two wins coming in the last three years against Kentucky. And despite the fact that Vanderbilt had a bad 2014, 
The Tops are still excited to play an SEC team and relish the chance to start this season with a road win against the Power 5 conference team. Typically when a coaching change occurs in any sport, there's an adjustment period for the players and staff as they get to know each other. But for the Hilltopper football team, that might not be the case. One of the benefits of the Tops hiring offensive coordinator Jeff Brom to take over the program is pretty obvious. He knows the players, the players know him, and they know the system. There shouldn't be too much of a learning curve for the team as they head into spring football and then when fall camp begins. The Tops beat Troy by five Thursday night. Tonight's opponent, South Alabama. Last place in the conference, South Alabama. So a chance for the Tops to keep their footing on the second seed in the conference. Heading into this week's games, the Hilltoppers said they were starting over. They were 0-0. Zero and zero, And now they're undefeated, a perfect 1-0 and oh after beating league leader UAB and Diddle Arena. And tonight we begin here in town at Houch and Smith Stadium. The Toppers weren't in action. Instead, it was Owensboro. Keep in mind, they made it all the way to the state championship last year, taking on Warren Central. Coach Clay Stevens and his defense going over the game plan, and it worked here. They hold Owensboro to the field goal. This made it 16-7 Red Devils. Third quarter Dragons trying to get some offense going, but Chance Shanklin, he's met by a host of Red Devils and is taken down for the sack. Still in the third, the Dragons defense played well here. They forced the fumble. This is Wes Blomeyer with the big hit. Dragons recover the ball. But again, the offense for the Dragons, just nothing doing. Shanklin sacked again. Still 16-7 Red Devils. Fourth quarter, that Dragon defense not giving up. Here they get to the Owensboro QB, Zach Gross. Hanging tight, hanging in there, but the defense would eventually wear down. Anthony James takes the handoff, finds the end zone. 23-7 Owensboro. They go on to win 29-7.